I advise myself and I advise you all to have consciousness of Allah. Allah tells us inside of his glorious Quran, O oh, you who believe, you who claim to believe, all of us who are here on, Yom, uh, on Jumu'ah, Yomul Jumu'ah, and we say that we are Muslims, O oh, you who believe, have consciousness of Allah, give him his right, meaning worship him, follow him, and do not die except in a state of submission, that is being a Muslim. And Allah also says inside of his glorious Quran, all of you who claim to believe, have faith in Allah, have God consciousness, and say words that hit the mark. Therefore, by taking this means and obeying Allah, he will correct our actions. Therefore, he will forgive our sins and our wrongdoings. And Allah says, whoever obeys him and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has won the ultimate victory. Now, as we know, regarding, for example, the basketball season that's happening right now, and those of us who are Bay Area natives, we've been used to seeing championships won. Whether that be by the Warriors, mashallah, now we have two Muslims inside of the NBA Finals, right? And we become happy because we have something that we associate ourselves with and we see on the uprise as a championship to be won. Naturally so, we incline to this. Or we can have a child who either does some karate, maybe a Quran competition, maybe swimming, anything. And we're extremely happy when they win that thing and therefore we throw parties. Alhamdulillah. So these same things that cycle in life is ultimately what life is about. And so the ultimate victory is earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by implementing what he has told us inside of his glorious Quran and following the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the ultimate victory is exactly that. It's being rewarded Firstly, from being a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, showing up to Yom al Qiyamah, being free of any types of worry, being free of any type of stress. Could you imagine that win? That you don't have to feel any stress on Yom al Qiyamah. That you get honored with standing underneath the shade of Allah's throne. You are able to drink from the blessed hands of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the Hawd where you will never become thirsty again and for our sisters and our women they get to drink from the blessed hands of his beloved daughter Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha what a true victory so today we would like to describe or we would like to talk about an immaculate surah surah al insan and before we get into this surah, this is a surah where Allah majority speaks of all of the beauty and the blessings and the rewards of Jannah, of paradise. And in this chapter, he slightly mentions just one time about those, about the hellfire. And it's beautiful about this because Allah, he speaks to the human beings as he's, his Quran, this is the point of it. And he speaks to the human beings, but then right after this chapter is the chapter of Al-Qiyam, al the Day of Judgment. And so what we want to do is reflect. We want to see what type of people we should be, what type of actions we should do in order to achieve the status of these people, such as Al-Abarar or Ibadullah, being true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what actions do we take to be that? And how do we refrain from being the opposite side of those people who will be chained up, shackled, and suffering inside of the fire? billahi min tilka. Say ameen. And also, the scholars say regarding this verse, I mean this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to know that we should never succumb to the thoughts of disbelieving people we live in this world so naturally so there are going to be disbelieving people and that's majority of actual human creation and at times 
we can get stooped by these people because they accuse and they bring their so-called proofs, right? And a lot of times what they do is they'll make sense out of nonsense, right? We're the, we don't speak about anyone else's religion, nor do we, nor are we derogatory towards that. But you can think of some of these concepts that go on today where people make sense out of nonsense. And yet people, they follow these paths. Where we have the most clearest thing, which is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'll get into the surah and we'll explain some of the verses and we'll reflect together inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Hal ata ala al insani hinum minad dahri lam yakun shay'an madhkura So first and foremost Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he asks us a rhetorical question. And a rhetorical question for those of us who are laymen and lay women, meaning the normal people, it's a question when you ask somebody, it's like duh, right? That will be the response to us in some sense. And so what Allah wants us to do is to extract a thought and meaning from this when he asks us. He says, has there come a time to you, O human being? Have you reflected that there was once upon a time that you were a thing that, weren't, that wasn't ever mentioned. Now you and I can reflect about that right now. For example, when our parents wed and they conceived, our mother at a point in time didn't even know she was pregnant. Therefore, we didn't even have a name. A name. Therefore, we weren't even mentioned. Or even if we go back before that, where we know through the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we were souls, right? And we lived in a realm where we barely had a certain type of consciousness. And we can go back before that, right? Because there were malaika who were created before us and the jinn kind who, who lived at least a thousand years on this earth before the human being was even created. Before, the, uh, before Adam was even made out of clay before the nur of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was created. So if you think back and think back and think back and you keep reducing the fraction, it's clear that we didn't just come out of nowhere. It's clear that we have a Lord who has created us. And so now Allah, he goes furthermore inside of this chapter and he tells us how he created and now sometimes we end up getting science who confirms what Allah has already given us. And we don't need that, but alhamdulillah, it supports. So we take it. But we believe in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So continuing, he says, so Allah says, truly, we are the ones who created the human beings from a mixture. A mixture of fluid from the man, the husband, and from the wife. From the mother and the father. And you were then created into a clot. And we know from the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are three periods of 40. And the second 40 is when, the, after the 40 days, is when the soul is blown into the womb of our mothers. And here we go, and we start to have some type of consciousness. And so Allah, He tells us that He's created us. He is the one who fashioned and formed us. And He is the one who gave us hearing and seeing to test us. Now we must ponder upon that. What does that mean? Because these are faculties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given us and usually we take them for granted. But what is the point of having see, uh, uh, hearing or seeing? It's because it will either be of benefit for us on Yawm Qiyamah because we listened 
to what the Prophet Muhammad revealed to us, meaning the glorious Quran, and we follow his sunnah, and we have our eyes as well to see truth. And these things, no matter how much we try to lie on Yom Qiyamah, will what? If this person wants to lie, this is in Surah Al Yasin. Allah will shut the mouths of these people and what will testify for them? Their limbs. So Allah says that He created us in order to test us. And, he get, and He's given us hearing and seeing. Alhamdulillah. So we use these faculties as we will go forward and see so we can make sure that these things are of our benefit, Yom Qiyamah. Right? You have your eyes, you have your ears. It's as if, uh, like today, how the kids have TikTok, Instagram, all of these different things. Could you imagine if someone walked up to you and held a camera in your face? You'd be like, get that out of my way. Get that out of my face. I don't want to be recorded. Well, we're, we're being recorded every single moment. Allah is always witnessing us. And besides that, Allah has other creations, right? That is in al ghaib that is in the unseen. The jinn can see us. The angels can see us. And then on top of that, even in our circumstance, that which we see, Allah has given us ears. He's given us sight. And the limbs, which are all witnesses against us. Continuing, Allah says, <laughs> He says, truly, I've given you all two paths there are two paths in which a human being can cho uh, can choose from to embark on and that is either the path of thankfulness shukr or of ingratitude kufr in a sense and the scholars say from the tafsirat even though these words and they're interpreted as gratefulness and ungratefulness these are two ways in which a human being can only go amongst in regards to Allah. Therefore, you are grateful if you believe in Allah, you believe in his books, his messengers, you believe in the unseen, and you implement that which he calls to you. And you believe in his prophet Muhammad wasallam, and you follow that. Or, because you have free will, you can also take this other path. And that other path will be following your own whims and desires. That other path will be making sense out of nonsense, believing in that and following it. Like you came out of nowhere. Like you're created to just fulfill yourselves and then to pass on and never to be remembered and you're just a, a, a fickle of creation that just happened to happen. So Allah says, for those people who decide to follow that path of which we just described, he says, <laughs> He says, for those people who choose to take the path of ungratefulness, of disbelief, of following their own whims, their own desires, of letting themselves be their Lord and their masters or others besides him and him alone? Well, he's prepared a fire. A fire that has chains and shackles of which this person will be subject to. Na'udhu billahi min tilka. Say ameen. We seek protection and refuge in Allah from that type of punishment. If you think about it, there are people who work in prisons. They may get paid a nice salary. But I bet most of those people don't even like working there. To see people chained up and shackled. Now this is just on earth. We wouldn't even want to be servants inside of the hellfire who served a hot meal to a person who was being subjected to that torment. If that was simply our job. We couldn't even sit inside of the car on a hot sunny day for more than an hour. So we must really think about these things that Allah Azza wa Jal describes to us. Because the hellfire is no joke. The punishment of the grave is no joke. And sometimes we live our lives haphazardly as if, oh, that day is so far away, I think I should be okay on that day. It's up for you and I 
to listen to Allah and what he says inside of his glorious Quran and to live on Yom Qiyamah as if it is today. And how should I respond if I was standing before Allah on that day regarding the situation that I am in right now? Therefore, you will be a person who takes him or herself to account before being taken to account. And these are the type of people that we want to be. And now we'll see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as he starts to describe paradise and what those who choose to follow him and to believe in him will end up having. And what type of characteristics that they take on and implement inside of their lives. So continuing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, How beautiful. Allah describes to us, and He says that truly those who were outstanding Muslims, those who listened, those who obeyed Allah, those who tried, those who followed the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for them they will have these chalices, these beautiful cups in paradise. And they will have certain types of engravings. Remember that time you got past this hardship. Remember you overcame this. Remember you submitted to Allah with this. Remember you fasted. These will be engraved on your cut special. How good is it that we feel? You know, we have our own cup, our own coffee mug or whatnot in the morning. And we know that that's ours. And we get, you know, number one dad or number one mom or best child written on it, right? These will be engraved perfectly about the person who you, who you were and the, char the outstanding character that you had when you were on earth and how you obeyed and implemented inside of your life. Continuing. Forgive me, I forgot one thing. And Allah also expresses how this drink that we will be able to drink from will be extremely beautiful. And it'll have a beautiful musk coming from it. And he says, The spring that you and I, inshallah, will be able to call from and to have this beautiful drink, wherever it is that we're walking in paradise, soon as we think about it, soon as it comes to mind, as soon as we want to taste, this spring will gush forth and your cup will be filled. How extravagant is that? It's like nearly having a superpower in paradise, which technically in a sense it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he keeps on describing paradise, but now he describes how are these people? How is it that they live their lives and how are they on this earth and what type of actions is it that they do in order to achieve these beautiful things of paradise? And he says, he says that they are people while living in the earth they fulfill any covenants or any promises any contracts it is that they make this is an upright and moral person he says and they also fear a day when there will be overwhelming evil, overwhelming terror that will be happening. So that means they don't wait until Yom Qiyamah and just hope that we've done our best in order to make sure that we're standing in the best of stances before Allah on that day. They say right now, right this moment, how is it should I respond to Allah given this situation? Whether I be in hardship or ease because they are both tests. And Allah sees me as he is a witness above me. And even if I can't picture that, the eyes that Allah has given me, the ears that Allah has given me are witnesses against me. It doesn't matter how much I try to run or hide. I will always be known about all the information will always be known about whether a person was here or not with me. Continuing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا 
these types of people, what else is it that they do? Out of their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they give food and they feed others, specifically mentioning those who are in need, the poor, they feed the orphans, and they feed the prisoners. So what is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing us to? He's saying that Muslims live your lives and do good deeds. Do good deeds and these will earn you the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continuing, what is it that these people say when they give? إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا And when they give, they don't hold anything over anybody. Oh, remember that gas money I gave you last week? Remember your blessings, brother. Oh, remember that favor I did for you, honey? Treat me better. Remember, son. Remember that time I got you that toy? Count your blessings, boy. Right? They don't hold anything over anybody. When they give and when they feed, they do it for the sake of Allah. And when you give for the sake of Allah, guess what? You would never have any animosity towards anybody who doesn't thank you because you know it is ultimately Him who rewards. So this is another way that we can stave off any types of Hasad or enmity or animosity that we may have over one another because we don't hold on to things so hard that we give away And when we do give those things away, we're doing it for Allah's sake and not that person That's where the ultimate victory is and that's what having God consciousness will do for you They also say Inna nakhafu yawman what is it that these people also say? They say that we fear from our Lord a day that will be extremely difficult and extremely scary. Meaning these are people who live in the moment right now. And they take themselves to account right now Today, not tomorrow, not the next day, not next year, not the next uh, Ramadan. May Allah allow us to reach another Ramadan. Say Amin. They don't wait until those times. They wait. They, they go right now and they live moment to moment. And they live as if they are standing before Allah on that day right now so that they don't have any regret. So what is the message? The message is to take ourselves to account right now before we are taken to account. The message is that you and I are being tested every single waking moment of our lives. And that this test is real. And that we are always being watched and observed about how we will respond to any given situation, whether it be harmful to us or good for us. And for a true believer, both of them are good for him or her. Lastly, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Finishing up the last verse that we're going to recite from this chapter. And how will a person, how can we be saved on Yom Al-Qiyamah from doing this? What will our state be? He says, Allah says, if you do these actions, if you implement these things into your life that He is conveying to us right now, that He will grant us protection from an evil day, from the evil of that day. And He will gift us a certain type of light on that day and an ease. So just think about the times where you may have thought or you've been in a tight situation. Any time that you may have had to get some test results, whether it had been inside of school, it could have been something from the hospital about a sickness that you may have. Have you ever wondered and sat there in animosity about the results that you may be receiving for anything it is that you wanted or felt like that you may fail? 
Dear brothers and sisters, if we fail in this life, if we don't get the job, the, the, the wife, the husband, whatever the case is, we have regrets here, right? But there's things that we can get over and we don't want to have any regrets on Yom Al-Qiyam. So let's make the best of our lives every single moment going forward. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ, من الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Allah tells us inside of His glorious Qur'an that truly the human beings are in a loss. Except for those who believe and who do righteous deeds and encourage towards the truth and encourage towards patience. Patience in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and patience in having tawakkul ala Allahi, meaning having trust in Allah and whatever situation it is that we're going through. I have said my first speech. I seek the forgiveness of Allah the Grand and the Majestic for myself, for you all, and for the entirety of the Muslim nation from every single sin. So take this time right now to think about how we are and the things that we have done wrong and seek Allah's forgiveness for truly He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wal Aqibatu Lil Muttaqeen Wala Udwana Illa Ala Zalimi Wa Nashadu An La Ilaha Inna Allahu Wahdahu La Sharika Lah له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. All praise belongs to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Lord of all the worlds. He is the safety net for all of those who have consciousness of Him, and there is no animosity, nor hardship, nor hate that comes from Him upon us except upon those who practice oppression whether that be upon themselves by committing sins and not turning back to Allah through tawbah or those who take the rights of others so lastly we would like to say subhanallah we would like to say a hadith of our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that will inshallah encourage us to that will encourage us to imbibe good deeds and to stay away from the wrong ones. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that there will come a time after Yom Qiyamah has commenced, the people of paradise will be brought. And also the people of the hellfire will be brought. And he says, they will be brought so much so until death is brought as well and death will be situated in between both of the groups the groups of those who are of the people of paradise and those of hellfire and death will be slaughtered so then a caller will call out oh people of paradise there is no more death oh people of the hellfire there is no more death and the Prophet, peace be upon him, he continues and he says that 
The people of paradise will become extremely happy in their happiness that this has occurred. And the people of the hellfire will become extremely saddened in their sadness regarding hearing this message. So let us understand the true world. The true world is the afterlife. The true life is returning to Allah, which we should never be afraid of because if we live our, our lives moment to moment, trying to do our best in order to achieve and reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what a beautiful meeting that will be. Muslims, we should not be afraid of returning to Allah. We should be happy. The only thing that we should be afraid about is if we're not constantly working on ourselves in order to change ourselves in this world. May Allah guide us to the straight path. May Allah allow us to become so much so aware of Him that every single footstep that we take, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every thought that we have, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single breath that we take, any action that we do, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive us of all of our shortcomings and be merciful to us. May Allah allow us to realize the significance of committing sins and not returning back to Him. We will falter. And there's tawbah. So when you seek tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be sincere. No matter how many times you repeat that sin, be sincere and try to put a barrier between yourselves and that sin that we keep committing. And Allah is the one who will change you. May Allah grant us his shade on Yawm Al-Qiyamah where there'll be no shade available for anybody except for those who were upright. May Allah allow us to be able to drink from the blessed hands of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the same for our sisters from his beloved daughter Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha. May Allah allow us to rejoice in paradise together. May Allah allow all of our sick all of those who have passed before, may Allah forgive the Muslims and enter them into perpetual bliss. This is the ultimate victory, Muslims, is overcoming ourselves. And we also call out to every single oppressor in the land, in Palestine, in the West Bank, in Rafah. We call out to those in Sudan who are committing massacres. We call out to every single oppressor in every single land to make a sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he knows every single thing that they do. And as often as their skins are roasted, he will give them new ones so that they may taste the fire. May Allah protect us from the fire and from being oppressors in any shape or form, whether it be against ourselves or others. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabiy al umiyyi وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم كن إخواننا المسلمين في المشارق الأرض والمغاربها اللهم كن لإخواننا المسلمين في المشارق الأرض والمغاربها اللهم كن لإخواننا المسلمين في المشارق الأرض والمغاربها إن الله أمر بالثلاث ونهي عن عن الثلاث إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهي عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم يذكرون تذكرون الله سبحانه وتعالى commands towards justice doing good and giving and being generous to those who are close to us and he forbids that which is shameful blameworthy and oppressive he teaches you and I so that we may take heed أذكر الله العظيم يذكركم وَاشْكُرُوهُ عَلَىٰ لِعَمِهِ يَزِدَكُمْ وَلَا ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرٌ Remember Allah much the grand and he and thank him and he will remember you and I and thank Allah for that which he has given you for he will give you more and truly the remembrance of Allah is the greatest of all things أَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ